Hey, what's up, Shaman King fans, and welcome to another episode of What's the Difference, where we compare and contrast the manga and various different anime versions of a series. So far, when it comes to Shaman King, we've seen that both adaptions have a tendency to leave out a lot of content, which is not uncommon, but at the same time, you lose a lot of great character moments. Although, at least with the 2001 anime series, it tends to somewhat add in a few things here and there that it thinks will help to progress the storyline, or at least add in some comedic moments where it's pretty standard. Whereas with the newer anime, it's only really adding in cleaner animation, and that's about it. The action is okay, not the most advanced in terms of actual style and artwork, but it's pretty decent. I just wish it would stick to some of the manga panels a little bit more because it has a tendency to do its own thing. And while that's not bad, the dynamic look of the manga tends to lend itself to the older anime a little bit more because the older anime at least follows those panels a little bit more faithful when it has the opportunity. So last time we saw the end of the fight between Taoren and Yoasakura which ended in a draw. They went to the opening ceremony for the, I guess, end of the preliminaries of the shaman fight. They've been told to wait a little bit until they can get some confirmation on where the final fight will take place. So we had a little bit of a party. Everyone kind of got to know each other. Ren, Horo, Horo, Yo. You know, they got to kind of hang out. And Ren kind of got a change of heart and a change of opinion on how he saw the outside world. And felt that the source of a lot of evil in his life is more or less his father. And he wants to take him down and try to start redeeming himself in the eyes of the people. Or at least, at the very least, in his own eye. And so Tao Ren is on a one-man mission to take down his father and keep him from conquering the world, more or less. Let's jump in and see what happens next. We're opening in, opening up with Volume 8, Chapter 69, nice, against Tao En. We are also towards the end of the 2001 episode 20, Soul Meta Cemetery, and we're opening up with the new series, the 2021 series, Episode 11, A Tale of Two Men. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, so he's on a little bit of a rampage, ready to go. Alright, and he goes on the attack. Yes, get it, get it, get it. Punch them, ghost. Punch them, zombies. And whereas with the older anime, the manga, and the newer anime, he, you know, Tao En just kind of appears during the battle. Whereas with the older anime, the des I guess they decided to have, you know, Ren actually make his way into the palace. Yeah, and then he does kind of appear, but, you know, it's more of a, a leisurely stroll for the most part. And, you know, the older anime actually cuts away from the kind of beatdown that Ren receives from his dad that sends him flying. And Ren wonders about the nature of his father's body. I don't know if they play some of this stuff elsewhere but it's weird that the older anime decide not to really include a lot of this stuff here and then he finds out about what his dad might have done to his sister you know that she was kind of going to bat for ren and we see what he ended up doing to lee pyrong you know basically turning him into bloody chunks it's actually pretty messed up and brutal you know that june committed the ultimate sin in having doubt in the Tao family. Honestly, the newer anime seems to really be, you know, staying on this moment. You know, they're not really cutting too many corners in terms of this. Yeah, and then you see the captured June, and it's basically, how dare you rebel against your father, blah blah blah. And Ren, regardless, tries to fight against his dad. However, there's something odd about Tao En's body. And then, he kind of, what happens, happens. And then everyone just kind of feels that. I like it that it's at training rather than, you know, at dinner, more or less. And then Basson shows up, and then re and they find out what happened. 
It's a terrifying moment. Oh no! What happened to Ren? What happened to our precious Ren Kun? And that brings an end to chapter 69. We open up with chapter 70, Believe. But that also brings an end to episode 20 of the older anime. And that brings us into episode 21, titled Believe. Believe. And the fact that. Ren has been imprisoned, and then you get a little bit of what happened. You know, you see June captured, and then they really play into the weird nature of Tao En's body in terms of the older anime, where he just, they straight up showing him weirdly just appearing. But they do cut a lot of quarters, oddly enough. Usually it's the newer anime that cuts around a lot of things, but here we're seeing that it's the older anime that cuts through a lot of stuff. But I guess it's trying to really keep up the mysterious nature of Tao En. And then BAM! He's taken down. Which we didn't actually see what happened after all of that. Interestingly enough, in the older anime, they have it where Pyron is actually fighting against Ren, rather than having just been dis um, disassembled. Which kind of makes sense why, you know, lose out on a good fighter. Better to see her own spirit, more or less, just beating her brother to a bloody pulp rather than having him in pieces. And then you see the moment where he tells Basson to run. I don't know, I guess, I kind of like it where it's at least a little more ambiguous as to the true nature of how Ren was taken down, but at the same time you could literally just believe that how and just smushed him with his hand. You know, the big old bastard. And then he's been locked away. You're the only people who can save him. Please save my master. And oddly enough, they cut out the weird dramatic moment where Basson pretends to disappear, but then it's just like, I'm a ghost. I, I can't really die. I was just getting a little carried away. And that's when he gives the full details about exactly what happened. Whereas in the older anime, there's the question of, you know, should we have Anna, you know, give us permission to go? And it's weird that they've chosen to go that route where Anna's a little bit more cold-hearted, because at least in terms of the manga and newer anime, you know, they're just already there. There was no question of if they were leaving or not. You know, they, they're gone. They're, they already leave. But you know, we give, we're given this backstory of how, you know, the Tao family operates, the nature of, you know, the destruction that they've caused. You know, it's treated more like it's a personal problem. You know, I, I don't know. I kind of prefer the thought of Anna being more accepting of letting Yo and the rest of them just go. And then you got, you know, a little bit of Ryu, his fight, because, you know, Ryu hasn't really joined the cast just yet. You know, and then then you have the whole thing with Tama, Pochi Kochi, you know, the events happening on Funbari Hill, the fact that ultimately they all decide to just kind of peace out in the night without telling Anna. It's, it's weird drama that they've decided to add into things. Although they do kind of go into the weird specifics of like how their journey to China. If you're going to have some filler, might as well have the filler be their trip to actually getting to China. You know, and Anna's a little bit more saddened by the fact that they can't just spend time together for the most part. But then we get into the whole events happening in Funbari Hill with the not boys, you know, and how they're messengers of how trying to take down Yo and all that good stuff. I don't care for the fact that they placed it here instead of before the events that happened, but it is what it is. You know, weird filler that they've chosen to add in. It makes the boys seem a little bit more powerful by having them go up against both Yo and Horohoro. It's a little bit more of a more desperate situation, but then in comes Ryu. He shows off his skills, and then he kind of joins everyone on their trip. And we get to see a little bit of a preview of how. And just like that, kind of, you know, have the moment where Anna shows up. As she has to kind of return all the spirits who were sent to heaven. Including, including both Amida Maru and Basson. And Anna kind of decides that, well, if you're going anyway, I might as well support you so you don't get yourself in trouble. Yeah, it's a kind of stubbornly sweet moment between the two of them. You know, she could be pretty, mu a pretty bit 
of a hard ass in most situations, but in others, she, she's she's pretty nice about things. <laughs> Sweet little moment. And then a little bit of a nice moment with Silva. It's interesting. I, it, I feel like there should have been a moment with Silva in the manga as well. Just because of the, you know, rigid nature of his relationship with Ren and all that good stuff. And now we pick up where we need to be. You know, and they're in the family torture chamber. And they've been... They've been locked up for a bit of a time. It's kind of sad events for the most part. Interestingly enough, in the older anime, they're locked in the same cell. In the newer and the manga, they're locked in different cells. And that brings an end to the older anime. That All that stuff with the boys really just kind of ran you through the entirety of episode 21. And then you pick up in episode 22 titled Our Deadly Blows, and you actually get to see Ren and June's mother, which isn't something that's presented too prominently in the older anim older manga and then the newer anime. And you know, it's actually pretty fascinating. You know, they still the older anime really does treat this very deeply that there's something weird about Tao N and gives a little bit of hints as well. You know, and they really play up the quote unquote evil nature of Tao N more or less. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna remove the fake friends that my son has formed and this and that. Everything is for the sake of the Tao family. You know, his father's really drinking this Kool-Aid. And I love that even the wife is kind of calling him out on some of his bullshit. Yep, episode 22, our special attack. And again, you get more of them traveling slowly to China. A little bit of character development of the relationship between Horohoro and Ryu. You know, they're more or less just kind of adding in more padding. I'm not surprised. A little bit more of Tokugero and you know, his nature of the relationship between everyone. Those sweeter moments with Tokugero that we didn't get before, but was in the manga and newer anime. And then you do get a lot of everyone talking about why they've kind of come along on this journey. But that's after they actually reach towards where Ren is, his home. And they get to see a little bit of the majesty that is China and its various mountain ranges. And the fact that they've come because Ren is their friend and they want to help him out. But Horohoro has only come here for the Chinese food. And then there's Ryu, because he wants to see the all the pretty ladies. And then you get a little more of Ren in the dungeon. Dungeon days. They really did kind of chop up a lot of what was going on with Ren when he was in the dungeon. Where you play out the entire scene of them being in the dungeon. Yeah, you know, originally, but... For the older anime, I guess they wanted to break up a few of the monotonous sections. And oddly enough, it ends up being June who takes um, uh, Yo's saying of it'll all work out instead of it being Ren. And I prefer it to be Ren to really bring that up because it really does show his growth and development as a person. So boom, they arrive at the mountains and then boom... They do a little reconnaissance. They say it's kind of strange. Seems like it might be a little bit of a trap. Kind of like they're welping, welcoming everyone in. And it's just like, okay, yeah, something is very suspicious here. And naturally, Tao En is observing all of this. I like it better where, they, better where they're actually observing through monitors rather than that weird portal thingy Tao En has in the older anime. And then he unlocks the very special Jiang Shi. You know, the various modified Jiang Shi. The super duper corpse squad. It's actually kind of weird because in the manga and older anime, it's treated more like they're stitched together, whereas in the newer anime, it's almost like they're robots or something. It's kind of weird. And then we get a bit of a layout of how things are, where Ren is being held. A little bit of a preview of what they need to do. That they just need to head into the basement. I love the way they look in the manga. 
Especially because you get Horohoro's battle outfit, which for some reason they didn't include in the newer anime, which I'm kind of bummed about. I love his battle outfit. It, it feels like it was obviously made in a response to Yo's battle outfit too. Yeah, and I like that you get a little bit of Yo worrying about Manta and all that good stuff. You know, don't endanger yourself, try to stay safe, only for them to be stopped by the modified Jiang Shi of the Tao family. And then it becomes Ryu who's the first to get attacked all of a sudden. Honestly, the older anime actually flows a little bit better in terms of the combat. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. I love it. And then everyone dodges out of the way. Mostly because of Horohoro doing his thing. Love that Horohoro action. Honestly, once again, the newer anime really dwelling a lot more on the talking points of it. It's the older anime that's really kind of rushing through a lot of this stuff. Which is weird because they rearrange so many things. And then you get to see Horohoro's new Oversoul. Just pretty awesome. And then he just freezes the elephant Jiangshi solid and just smashes him. It's so brutal. The new Popo Punch. And then the uh, leopard dude goes in for the attack, in for the kill, only for him to be sliced down by Ryu. Honestly, it's pretty brutal with how they take a lot of these guys out. And you get to see <laughs> Ryu's weapon, which, I'm sorry, it looks pretty ugly. I always thought it was like the weirdest thumb. And he's mad that they cut his hair in half. And we don't get the whole fact that Ryu utterly just dices the one guy into pieces. But I love the fact that we really get to see just how powerful Ryu and Horohoro actually are. Honestly, the older anime kind of treats it like there's at least a little bit more of a struggle, whereas with the manga and newer anime, it's just like, no, there's there's no struggle at all. These guys are literal fodder. You actually get to see at least a little bit of the fight that Horohoro and Ryu go through. Yeah, it really does feel a lot more desperate in the other, in the older anime, and oddly enough, the leader, who's dressed differently for some reason, just kind of lets Yo go. Although I love how Ryu's just like, I can handle this alone, you can go as well. I like that they've actually included more of the fight that Horohoro and Ryu is going through. But considering how easily they took out the others, it's just kind of like, no, you guys should not have a problem with any of this. And the two guards of the prison, they're met actually a lot earlier than in the manga and newer anime you know they're dealt with immediately by yo whereas with with the fact that they're dealt with later on and because pyron wasn't torn to pieces he doesn't need to be sewn up and enter yo asakura and he's utterly destroyed those friggin guard zombies and you know whereas the both versions of the anime keep going this is the end of volume 8 of the manga and that brings us into volume 9 and Ren gets released he plays haughty and all that good stuff acting tough it's actually a pretty sweet moment interestingly enough it's not Manta who comes with them honestly they gloss over a lot of the discussion between um Ryu Jun June and Yo. I mean, Ren, June, and Ryo. I actually love the fact that Ren, Ryo just kind of accepts that that's Ren. That that's just who he is. And he just kind of goes with it. And June has all but given up for the most part. I like that they kind of linger on June for the most part. How broken she's kind of become after all this. And of course, Tao N being a creep, watching his children with security cameras. It's probably for the best that they didn't include the panda. Although, Pyron is still kind of presented presented as a obstacle that they'll have to overcome in the older anime. You get a little bit more of the fight between Horohoro and Ryu and the Jiang Shi. But again, it's not much of a fight. It goes by pretty quickly. And a little bit more of, you know, Ren and Yo is actually pretty nice. I love the introspection that Ren has over his life and just how he's been treated and all that good stuff you know how he feels about his father how his father influenced him and even branded him for the most part he feels that ultimately maybe if he defeats his father who 
kind of started all of this, start ran on this path of hatred and destruction, he might be able to kind of grow, even at least a little. And Ren feels that it's a path that he has to walk alone for the most part. And at least he knows that he's being kind of selfish for the most part. And he doesn't really want to bring others on this dangerous path. I actually love this moment where it's just, you don't have to do this alone. And then the guards show up ready to, f you know, have a bit of a throwdown. Whereas with the older anime that decide to have Pyron be the thing that they need to confront. I guess it's a little bit more emotional if they have to fight Pyron who is under the control of Tao N. And then Pyron is transformed for some reason. It, it, it's just so weird. The choices that they've made. Like, it, how do they have this ability? It's very weird. I mean, I guess it's a little bit more interesting than the easily dispatched Jiang Chi that they take out in the uh, manga. But honestly, I kind of prefer the coolness of how things go. And that ends up being the end of the newer anime episode. It's still kind of odd. It's just like... I guess they just wanted to show off the weird skills that Tao N has by turning Pyron into a dragon? Like, um... I think it's fine because at least it's just like, we just need to take out this one last Jiang Shi. You know, defeat the, the Oversoul and Pyron the corpse who should be fine, hopefully. Yeah, and that kind of ends... Where, that's about where I should stop in terms of the older anime as well. Honestly, I kind of prefer ending things with them defeating the Jiangxi. You know, showing that they've kind of become a little bit of a team. They got some team up action going on. It's, it's more of a sweeter situation. And that takes care of everything. It, it's still weird that they fight some weird spirit dragon. But at the same time... Again, it's showing their team up action. Pretty nice stuff. Pretty fun stuff. You know, what can you do with the power of teamwork? But all in all, it's oddly enough, it's the newer anime that acts a little bit more faithful to the manga. Keeping in a lot of the discussions that normally they tend to cut out a lot of. Um, so, a lot of points to the newer anime just for keeping things a little bit more faithful. The older anime rearranges things in a much more confusing and less cohesive manner that I, I don't really care for, like inserting, inserting the boys before they go to China in order to kind of give you a preview of how. I, I really do prefer how kind of being this other entity who's in the background. He should not be anywhere involved in this story arc in any way, shape, or form. Um, and the weird spirit dragon that Pyron gets transformed into, you know, it makes it a more desperate situation and they have to operate a little bit more with finesse in order not to destroy Pyron. But weird Pyron dragon, like, no, I, I don't care for it. I don't care for it. Like, like it's, it would be cool if it were anything else except the Pyron dragon. You know, you could have a dragon of damn near anything else, but Pyron, just, no, it, it's weird. You know, a lot of points to the newer anime for th keeping things a little bit more faithful. But I, that's, that's how a lot of this stuff kind of goes from time to time. Sometimes there's stuff that's cut out that's, you know, it really shouldn't be cut out because it helps to develop things. And sometimes certain things are added that it's just like you might as well have put in the cut out content if you were going to do this. Like what you've chosen to do, the way you've chosen to do it, I, I don't care for it, not one bit. It, it's, it would be interesting... Um, if this was what was done from the beginning, but I'd still be questioning this decision regardless. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What version do you prefer the most? Again, I still, manga is king as always for me. But the newer anime really got a lot of good points from this manga from the manga and kept it in there a lot of the talking points especially in terms of how ren is feeling it feels like the older anime really glossed over a lot of that stuff and didn't keep it as in the forefront as they should have but 
let me know in the comment section below like this video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it uh subscribe bell all that good stuff if you feel like it or don't i ain't your daddy but i still love you like one and until next time i've been deuces then and you just watched what's the difference bye